Today we're going to be covering how sections work inside of Quickly because the HTML that they output is maybe a little bit different to what you might expect. And also, if you use BEM naming conventions for your CSS classes, you definitely want to watch this video because when you use classes on your sections, it actually behaves differently than if you don't add classes. You'll see what I mean in this video, but definitely watch this if you are interested in using Quickly. It's going to be a quick video, but it's definitely worth knowing how this works. So here on my blank page, let's go ahead and add a section inside of Quickly. And in here, we might add a heading element and I'll call this subscribe to my YouTube. Then we'll go save and make note that currently we've just added a section block with a heading block inside it. If we preview that page and reload and have a look at what's going on in the code, you'll see that we have our section, we have that heading, and then we have this little guy here. It's a div and it has the class CC hyphen wrapper. And if I click on this and have a look at what's going on inside here, you can see that this width is 100%, has a max width on here, which I'm gonna show you in just a second what this is doing. Then the padding top and bottom, and then left and right. But if we compare this, a section, a div, and then a heading, we only have a section and a heading. So that's the first thing to take note of is that that inner wrapper, that div, is not exposed here in the Quickly Editor. So if you're coming from a builder like Bricks Builder, where you add a section into your page and then inside there you add a container, and then inside that container you start building your layout for that section, here it's the same idea, but the wrapper isn't actually shown here in the builder. So now the next thing that I wanna show you is where are these values coming from that are applied to the wrapper? Here if we go to quickly settings, and then here under global styles, if we go to settings and scroll down a little bit, you can see that we have section defaults and then the values that are here are what are being applied to this inner wrapper. With the 100, we have our variable and all of our padding. And that's exactly what we're seeing in this panel. So that's another thing that I want you to take away from this video is that the padding is set on the inner wrapper of a section, not the section itself, as well as the max width that pulls your content in. And you set them from this panel here. So now let's go ahead and build some sections and then review the outputted HTML. And for this part, we're just gonna recreate this header section on the Quickly website, which has a headline, some text, two buttons side by side, and they are positioned in the center of the section. So to do that, I'm going to delete this and let's start from scratch. So the first thing that I'm going to do is give this a background color, just so we can see what we're doing here. So back here on the block inspector, so I'm editing this directly. I will go down to design and then background and then colors and then select this sand color from my global colors. Then inside here, let's go ahead and we can add a heading element and I'll paste the text in there. Then under that, we'll put some text. And then under that, we need to do our two buttons side by side. And to do that, we're gonna put them in a wrap, a div. So here in the section, I'll right click and then insert and then we will choose div. And then inside this div, we will insert two buttons. So there's the first button. So here I'll say start now. And if you're wondering why this is so small, I've scaled this down here under scaling. It's currently 60%, just so we can see the interface a bit more zoomed in for today's video. So it's not actually gonna look like this on the front end. So there's our first button. I will go and apply one of my global CSS classes that I've created called button. And then I will just duplicate this. And this button, we will say try for free. And now we need to sit these buttons next to each other. And normally I wouldn't style these items directly by doing this. I would set up CSS classes and then style those classes. And I name my classes using the BEM naming conventions or methodology. We're gonna look at that a little bit later on and then we're gonna relate BEM to sections. Cause I know a lot of people are using BEM to name their CSS classes. And the way that you use CSS classes on your sections behaves differently to what I'm about to show you. So definitely stick around for that if you are using BEM. But for now, let's just go and apply styling directly to these elements. So to sit these buttons next to each other, I'll click on the div, then under design and then layout, I will go flex, and then it's gonna be the row, which is default, but then we'll center and we'll center. And then let's go back up to our section and to position these elements in the middle and add some gap, I will go layout, and then here we'll go flex, and then we'll go column, and then center, and then to add the spacing down here for the column gap, we will do that, and maybe row gap as well for mobile. So with this done, let's save this and go and inspect the HTML. But remember, when we were going onto our section and applying a flex layout with all these different properties, 
This was on the section. If we go back to the front end and reload and inspect the code, here on our section, the only property applied here is our background color. If we go to that wrap, that hidden in a div, CC hyphen wrapper is a CSS class, our flex properties were applied to that inner wrapper. Now that's not gonna affect the way that you build your pages. It's just something to know that clicking on a section here and applying things here, it's actually applying them to that hidden in a div that you can't see here in the builder. But again, it doesn't cause any issues if you build your sections like I just showed you, where you're not using CSS classes and you're applying styling directly to your elements inside of Quickly. And if we click back on the section where we applied our flex layout to our section, but it actually affects that inner wrapper, the layout isn't the only thing that applies that inner wrapper. With our section selected, if we were to go to something like margin and padding, and we set our top padding to be zero, and save, you can already see that's updated here. But if we go back and inspect our code after refreshing, it wasn't applied to our section, it was applied to that inner wrapper, padding top zero. And that padding zero overrode, or overwrote, overwrote, overwrite, overrides the padding top that was our 3XL, which was the default that we set under quickly, global styles, settings, and then here for our section default, the padding top by default is 3XL, but we overwrote that by clicking on the section directly and then in the block inspector over here, setting it locally on that block. But again, that didn't apply to our section, it applies to that hidden inner wrapper. So now this is where things start to get a bit different if you're using BEM or you're styling using CSS classes. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna get this section here and let's call this original. And then let's go ahead and rebuild this using CSS classes and BEM methodology for naming those classes. We'll style our classes and then I'll show you how this actually affects the HTML and the CSS on the front end. So here, let's go ahead and add a section. So I'll search for a section and add that in. And I'm just gonna quickly rename this to BEM, which is CSS classes. Now inside here, I will insert a heading and I'll just get the text from there and paste that down there. And then after that, there will be a paragraph. So I'll do that as well. And then under that, we need the two buttons. So we're gonna do the same thing as before. So in the section, we will insert a div. And then inside here, we will insert two buttons. So button one, they will say start now. And then in quickly, under the block inspector, I will add the button global CSS class like that. And then let's go ahead and duplicate this. This one will say try it for free. So with all our elements in this section, let's go ahead and add our CSS classes using the BEM naming methodology. So I'll click on the section and we'll go up to here and let's call this main hero, press enter. And then for this heading, we will add a new CSS class. This will be main hero two underscores. And then this is going to be the heading. And then this will add, and this is going to be text. And then this, and this we could call main hero footer wrap. And then in here, we could call this footer button. And we can apply that same class to this second button there. So now each of our elements here has a CSS class. So let's go ahead and add some styling here to get this looking like the previous section. So I'll go up to our section and then with the class selected, if you're not sure if you're editing the class, whatever shows in here is what you're editing. So currently I'm editing the blocks CSS class. But if I click to here, now I'm editing the main hero CSS class. So here, let's go to background and we'll add our sand background. Next, let's go down to our footer wrap and get these buttons next to each other. So with the CSS class selected, which we know because it's up here, let's go flex and then center. And then down here, I'll add my medium gap. So now all we need to do is center the content in this section and add our gap in between the elements. So clicking back on the section, like we did in the previous example, with our CSS class selected under design and then layout, let's go ahead and add our flex, column, center, but nothing happened. So what's going on here? Because in the previous example, if I click back up here, you can see we have under design, layout, flex, column, center, but then on this one, we're not getting the same results here. So let's go ahead and save this page and you know what, let's make this second section just so it's a bit easier to follow along. Let's go ahead and change the background color to a light blue. Let's save and save on the front end reload. 
And so now this is our original section with the sand. And if we go down, here's our new blue section. Let's right click inspect to see the code back on the section. So let's have a look at what's going on here. So on our new section, when we add properties to our CSS class, they actually go to the CSS class. So here for our main hero CSS class, we can see our flex properties have been added into that class. Whereas in the previous example where we didn't use CSS classes, they were getting added to this inner wrapper. So if we have a look at this inner wrapper, there's no flex properties there. And so that's why it's not laying out our content within there. So as you can see, using CSS classes does actually affect how you build your websites using Quickly. So coming back here, let me show you some of the options that you have available to you to build your website using BEM, but then also be able to work and interact with that inner wrap that you can't see here in the builder. So if I collapse this top section and we focus on this second section, if I click on the main hero global CSS class and go to design and then layout, we really want to move these options here or these properties for flex to the inner wrapper. So let's go ahead and just remove them from here. And then to target that inner wrapper, we can do two different things. The first thing that you can do is using what's called relative styles inside of Quickly. So here with the CSS class selected, you can come under relative styling and then you can add a new relative style. And then you click here under rules and you can give this a name. So call it .cc wrapper. And you can call this whatever you want. I just got into the habit of calling it the actual CSS class name and you can copy that as well. We'll use it down here. Then here, because we're editing the section or the CSS class that's applied to the section, we want to target the inner, so the child, and then by class, and then it will be CC wrapper. And I don't think you need to put the dot like that. And you can see review here, main hero directly in there, the CC wrapper. Now, if we exit out of that, and then we click to edit that relative styling, now we can use the quickly interface to apply styling. So I could go layout, and then we could go flex, flex direction column, and then center it. And then we can come down here and add our row gap. And now we've spaced out the elements. If we save and save and come back here and reload our section main hero, there's no flex properties there. If we go into the inner wrapper, now main hero and then the inner.cc wrapper, which is this, has our flex properties. Align center, there's our row gap, display flex and flex column. So relative styles is the first way that you can target and style that inner wrapper. The second option that you have available to you is to use the global class selector. So the way that that would work is as follows. Let's say that we click to edit this CSS class that's applied to our section. And in the relative styling here, I remove that. What you can do is with the class selected, go to the advanced tab and then the global class, you can copy that and paste that down there. And then we can target the direct child with the class CC hyphen wrapper. And then in here, we can just write some custom CSS. So display flex, flex direction, column, gap, size, medium, and then align items, center. And then we could even text align center that there. So if we save and save. So with that done, when we update this, so we do this, and then we here click save, Behind the scenes quickly is generating a CSS file for us. And when it's going through and generating that CSS file, it's getting this and it's replacing it with the selected class up here. So at runtime in our final CSS file, it will say that. So main hero and then directly the wrapper inside there. That's what the global class selector allows us to do. So if we go to the front end and I just reload the page here and we have a look at the code, main hero and then the wrapper, pretty much exactly like what we saw before. All those things here are just what we wrote there. Now, the next thing that I wanna show you is how to speed up your development process by creating your own utility classes for your sections. Let's go ahead and with this section, we will duplicate this. And here, I am going to go to the primary tab. And just for now, I'm gonna directly apply on this section element, a different background color, so we can see what we're doing here. So let's say throughout your website, you're using BEM to name all your CSS classes. You're applying your styling to those classes, but you want to regularly be able to add a section into the page that has no spacing or no padding at the top of it. How could you go and set something like that up inside it quickly? Well, here's how you could do that. So sure, you do have the option to just overwrite the default padding on a section here under global styles and then sections. The default here is my size 3XL. To overwrite the globals here, you can just click directly or locally on a section 
and then come to the design, margin and padding, and then just for the top, you could set this to zero. That does work, but you could also just create a utility class which might be a little bit faster to apply. So here's how you create that and then how you could apply that in the future. If we click on our section and then go to add new class, let's call this section and this is gonna be padding top zero. And I already have that there, but let's just delete that and recreate it. So with that done, I'll click create. And then with this selected, and we know it's selected because it's showing here, under the design and then margin padding here, let's set the padding top to zero but it doesn't work. And I actually just forgot what I was doing. This is why I'm making this video. This doesn't work. We need to target the inner wrapper. So let's undo that. So with this class selected, we could go to the advanced tab and we could do this and then that. And just like before, the inner CC wrapper padding top zero. And you can see that's been removed. And now if we were to click back on this section and I just remove that, Let's just say I've just added this section into my page. So let's just say we like duplicate this. And then this second section, I don't want padding up the top. I could click on it. And then here I go section here and then padding top zero, I click and now that's done. So that's one way you could do it. The other way, if we click back to edit this class is to remove the global class selector and then do it like I showed you before under design and then relative styling and you could create it like that. So let me show you what not to do so in Bricks, I had that inner wrap exposed in the builder, but like you've seen in today's video, we don't have that in quickly. So I tried to outsmart the system. And so I went up here and I added a div element. And then in here, I inserted another div. And then on this first div, I went to quickly. And then here I created a global class and I called it something like section. And then up here, I changed the HTML element to a section. And then for the wrap here, I went up here and did section wrap. And then on this class, I went to the design tab and I went to the width and I gave it a width of 100% and its max width was something like 1200 pixels or something. And then under uh, margin and padding, its margins were auto and auto. So it was centered on the page. And then I could go and insert content inside there, something like a heading add my heading, write a bit of text, and then update and update. And on the front end, if I reload, you can see that our section is here with our section class. The div that we added is here with section wrap. And on this wrap, we're centering it, giving it a max width, which pulls the content inside it into our page. So that's the route that I went down because I felt like I did need to have this inner wrap div exposed because I was so used to it in Bricks Builder. But to be honest, after designing a couple of pages, I was like, it's just so much more work to go and do all of this than just adding the section. Based on my personal experience, I would just use the section block. To continue getting up to speed faster with quickly and understanding how it works behind the scenes, I would definitely recommend watching this video here where I run you through how to use dynamic data inside your quickly templates, inside of the full site editor to actually be able to build your website while creating fewer templates. You'll see what I mean in that video. It's currently on your screen now. I'll see you in that video.